Colorizing a black and white photo is a great way to rekindle thoughts of yesteryear and show history in a modern way. You know, we oftentimes think of the past as black and white, but like today, the past was alive with color. So let's dive in and walk through the process of colorizing a black and white photo. If you've scanned your photo as a grayscale image, you're going to want to change its color mode from grayscale to RGB color. From here, I recommend that you make any minor adjustments to your image, such as contrast using levels or curves. In this case, my image is okay, so all I'm going to do is make some minor repairs to the blemishes that I find in the image. To do so, I'm going to use the spot healing brush, making sure that I have the pressure control button on the options bar set so that I can adjust the size of my brush based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. Now just scrolling around the image, I'm just cleaning up the more obvious blemishes. Now that I've got the image cleaned up, I'm going to zoom out and toggle the visibility of layer 1 so we can see a before and an after. Again, all we did was simply clean up some of the minor blemishes. Next, I'm going to merge all of my visible layers to a single layer by hitting Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E. And then I'm going to get rid of that retouch layer. Finally, I'm going to rename that flattened or merged layer to Retouched. This will serve as our new background. From here, we can start the colorization process. My preferred method of colorizing black and white photos is using solid color adjustment layers whose blend mode is set to color. I'm going to start by colorizing the skin of these two individuals. To create the solid color adjustment layer, I'm going to select the adjustment layer icon in the layers panel and then select solid color. From here, I'm going to select a flesh tone. Now I'm not too concerned with the exact tone just yet. I will have the option to change it later on if I don't like it. Once the adjustment layer is created, I'm going to change the blend mode from its default normal to color. And you can see we have a sepia type toned image. Now the reason why I like the solid color adjustment layers is because they come with layer masks. And layer masks enable us to selectively apply the adjustment only in the areas that we want. What you can see on your screen here is that the thumbnail, or otherwise the layer mask next to the thumbnail, is currently white, which means it reveals the color that you see here. What we want to do is fill that white layer mask with black. And I'm going to do so by going up under Edit, selecting Fill, and next to Contents, selecting Black. Once I click OK, the layer mask fills with black and thus hides the color. Now I'm going to select my paintbrush tool and make sure that I have white selected as my foreground color. Next, I want to make sure that I have the pressure control icon selected that enables me to adjust the opacity of my brush based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. From here, it's simply a matter of using a soft round brush to paint on the areas that I want to allow the color to show through. What I'm doing here is tracing around this gentleman's face and I'm slowly building out, or I should say filling in the color. Now once I get to a certain point, rather than brush on the entire face, what you can do is use your lasso tool or other selection tool to get a rough selection of the area that you want to fill. And then go under Edit, once again like I did before, select Fill, and then Contents. In this case, we want to use white. Again, we want to reveal the color. Once I've filled it, I like to look at the mask by itself. And to do so, you can hold down the Option or Alt key and click on the Layer Mask thumbnail. This is going to reveal the grayscale version of your mask. Black conceals, white reveals, and that hard line that you saw there had kind of a hard transition. Varying shades of gray will let the opacity of that color show through at various levels of opacity. I'm going to use my brush to simply clean up that hard edge. Once again, holding down the Option or Alt key, I'm going to click on the layer mask to go back to the color version of our image. From here, I'm going to flip back and forth between my foreground color and my background color, or otherwise black and white, to reveal or conceal the color based on how well I've painted within the lines. Now this gentleman's face is kind of glowing here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first tone down the opacity of the layer. 
And as I've done so, I kind of feel like maybe the skin tone isn't exactly where I'd like it. So I'm going to double click on the solid color thumbnail and then bring up my color picker so that I can then can select a slightly different color. Again, this is one of the great benefits of using adjustment layers. You can go back and forth depending on how well you've selected colors in the first place. From here, I'm going to speed up the video a bit and I'm simply going to repeat the process, this time painting on the young lady's face. Next, I'll flip over my foreground and background color, painting with black, and I will remove the color from the couple's eyes and mouth. Next, I'll make sure that I fill in their hands. From here, I'm going to address the color of the gentleman's eyes. I'm thinking a nice color blue would work. So repeating the process of creating the solid color adjustment layer, I'm going to select a blue tone and paint in the iris of the eye. I'll then adjust the opacity of the layer to tone down the blue. Again, at this point, it's simply a matter of repeating the solid color adjustment layer process for each of the individual areas that you wish to colorize. Rather than bore you with all the individual elements that I'm going to colorize, I'm going to flip over to a more finished version of the image and show you how we can finish it up. With all of the individual elements painted, I like to add a little bit of contrast and highlight to some of the areas that appear a little flat. To do so, I select the topmost adjustment layer, and then from the layers panel, I click on the new layer icon. I then change the blend mode from normal to soft light. This enables me to create a kind of dodge and burn or darken and lighten layer. On this type of layer, when you paint with white, you essentially highlight an item, and then when you paint with black, you can darken it or create a little contrast. So flipping between black and white, I'm simply going to paint on some of the areas to add a little bit of highlight and a little bit of shadow. Again, I'm going to speed up the process. With our image finished, I look at these couple's faces and I think that their skin tones are a little bit muddy. So what I'm going to do is hit Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E to merge all of my visible layers to a single layer. I'm then going to change the blend mode from normal to screen. This is going to make everything really bright. Now, by applying a layer mask, I'm going to mask out that bright version of the image. And then, just as we selectively revealed the color adjustments, I'm going to reveal that highlighted or lighter version of our image. This is going to smooth out some of the skin tones and keep the face from looking as muddy. Lastly, I'm going to create yet another new layer, again changing the blend mode from normal to soft light, and then selecting a skin tone to further smooth out the color of their skin. Turning those two new layers on and off, you can see it makes a huge difference. So there you have it. You can see it's not an overly difficult process to colorize a black and white image. It is a little bit redundant. Again, it's almost like coloring in a coloring book, painting in the individual areas. But the results can be extremely rewarding. So go ahead and dig through that old shoebox full of black and white photos and select one you'd like to colorize.